Yo, 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 this is too real sports, but we keep it way too real. Unapologetic, <laughs> unbiased, uncensored. Oh, man. Man, I, I guess I'm so filled with excitement. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yes, we got a special guest, Dwight Burt. Appreciate you, boss, man. man. Former Marquette University, current overseas professional basketball player. Yes, yes. So we're going to, you know, go over a couple things. Before we start, like always, we here too real, like always show our appreciation. You know what I'm saying? So this is a, you know what I'm oh. saying? Special <laughs> nah, edition, Rose Age. I ain't gonna say the brand, cause they ain't give us no money. But, but uh, yeah, just a little appreciate small, love. small token yeah, that show we appreciate, appreciate you coming that, through. Man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. So uh, yeah, man, let's let's get into it. We're gonna talk a lot of things. We're gonna talk about your journey, uh, mm -hmm. motivate some people out here, myself, mm -hmm. kids, and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Showing what it takes. We're gonna talk some current sports, right? Current sports to um get his opinion about um the NBA finals, about what he thinks LeBron, the LeBron hype, where he's going, and everything, and his take on about the NBA draft and a couple of plays and how he think they'll um transition to the NBA. My Barcelona brother, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Team Messi. Team Messi. My Barcelona brother. Yeah, it's number Team 10 Messi. on the back of this job. Yeah, Don't get it confused. Came in uniform. Came from uh, so, yeah, we like definitely going to talk. You know, I, like I know it. you being out in France, we're going to talk some football. Yeah, football. You know, I don't yeah. know what accent that was. Yeah. I don't know what country. But Seriously. football, yeah. we're going to talk some of that. Fashion, we're going to hit a little. I need. I got a question. Yeah. I know you went to the fashion, too, a little. So I got a question. We'll get into that. You're going to make some things clear for me. But uh, yeah, let's get into your journey, man. When when did you start playing basketball? Um, for me, I started playing ball really young. You know what I'm saying? Like my father was uh, like we spoke about before. Um, my father is a uh, is a uh, from Barbados, and he moved to the states when he was in yeah. his teens. Yeah, Barbados. Shout out Barbados, the island. Um, so he moved here when he was a teen, and he was just he was really an athlete. So he's into different sports, but he always really liked basketball and, and um and football, soccer. You know what I'm saying so those were his two go tos. He played American football and all that, but like his best two sports was that. And when I was young, being in Brooklyn, like this is the sport like you know I'm saying like everybody plays in the area, so it's not really like. It's not really too many other options sports wise, I'm saying. Like for me, I also was basketball players and he was like heavy on like he loved the game, so he was like trying to instill that in me from like real, real early, like young. And with me, like I was taken to it, you know, but I had other interests at the same time. So I was also like not even really cognizant of the fact like basketball was a real, real thing, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't really like him being like from where he's from, moving to the city, like he wasn't like deep rooted in like having too many connections as far as like how to do things like with a child coming up, trying to put him in the system of like basketball in the States, which is, you know, the little AU and you school and all that, you know what I'm saying? So early on, like I never really took to like the whole basketball thing as far like as far as like focus on on it like I like like some of these young like prodigy type players until they either are a prodigy or they a bust, you know what I'm saying? So with that, I just have a, I ended up having, like I said, other interests. And then I came back to the basketball thing late because um, when I was 11 or 12, my mother we, my mother ended up moving us to Delaware, you know what I'm saying? Like in school, like she saw some things like wasn't really going the way she would have liked it, you know, early, you know what I'm saying? So she was kind of like, nah, we out, you know what I'm saying? We smart, done, like smart. done. You know what I'm saying I got in trouble in school a little bit and she was like, nah, we out like next weekend type shit because my uncle already lived in Delaware. So we ended up moving there. From Brooklyn, right? From Brooklyn, from Brooklyn, from Brooklyn at that point. When I was young, I was born in Brooklyn. I lived in Queens for like a couple of years and I ended up moving back to Brooklyn before I ended up moving out of De out to Delaware, completely out of New York. And when you was out in Delaware, you went to Christina High School. Christiana High School, oh, Christiana. yeah. Christiana, yeah, yeah. how was that? I mean, that was, it was cool. Like, it was, I mean, for me, at that point was when I was saying I started to have aspirations towards like being an athlete and playing ball. So what grade was that? This was like eighth grade when I when I really started getting into it. I'm like 13, and and what really made me like fall in love with the game was the Knicks at that point. That's the year they went to the they went to the chip against San Antonio. They got washed, but at the same time, like for me, that was the hometown squad. So seeing, that, I'm like, yo, I could do that. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying, but being at that point, being in Delaware, like it wasn't really, it's not really like a grassroots basketball type of like place. You know what I'm saying, like now it's starting to like catch up a little bit, but like if you're from the city, New York, like 
a gnat surround the area, like you always can get a name playing in that system because they're always playing in the, the tournaments, always playing with each other, and then you take it nationally. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but at that point in Christiana, like I was like, yo, like I'm I'm playing varsity first year. You know okay, saying? Like right. I'm a contributing varsity player first year, like. Just because, like, my size at that point, you know what I'm saying? How tall you in freshman year? Freshman year, I had an ill growth spurt coming in from, from seventh grade to eighth grade. I was, went from five, eight to, like, six, two in one summer. And then I, like, gradually, like, Kept on going. evened out from there. But when I had the, um, the, my freshman year, like, I was contributing power forward, contributing all that. So I'm like, yo, I need to get out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I need to get back to New York. Because my pops at the same time, he's telling me, and this is like, while I'm playing in Delaware, I'm also coming up to play AAU, like in New York with my pops, because he was a coach. Okay, so, what team AAU in New York? It was a bunch of different, like, Brooklyn name teams, I'm saying. Right. But he, it wasn't nothing, like, established like that. Just young kids, like, underdog type kids, like, all playing. Right. Like, but we was winning little tournaments and all that, like, yeah. on in Rhode Island, all that shit. So. My pops trying to get me back to the city. My mom's like, nah, you know, like, you gotta, you gotta stay here. Like, she don't want me to go back to that same vibe. I'm like, nah, I gotta get back. I'm lit. Like, I'm saying, I go there. Like, it's gonna be different. And she was finally was like, alright, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta come back. Like, when you get the chance every weekend. Alright, cool. I'm saying whatever. Cool, mom. I'm still coming back on the weekends, all that. But I'm back in New York, and that's when I ended up going to Rice High School. The, the legendary. The legendary. <laughs> legendary. legendary. Rice the High School. Legendary. Yeah, yeah, that's when I, that's when we first met. Yeah. Came through. That was senior year. Senior year. Senior year. Senior year. How was your experience there at Rice? That one year. For me, that was really like it was unexpected because at the end of the day, like when I came back, I was supposed to end up going to Lincoln and playing with Sebastian okay. Telfair, like his end, like his senior, yeah. year, like with that team. And Tom Pena. Yeah, and, but uh, yeah, but some stuff ended up happening with my like administrations to the school and all that, and they ended up getting like capped at a certain point because of like over like overpopulation of the school or something like that. And then like they couldn't pull enough strings while I was like the school had started. Like remember, like the first few weeks I wasn't at Rice. What? You know what I showed up like two, three weeks into the school year because my mom's was like wilding on my pops, like, yo, why is my son not in school? We like, nah, we waiting on the Lincoln thing, we waiting, we waiting, we waiting. So I'm like, all right, cool, like I'm not going to school, so I'm like chilling, like, yo, I'm just working out chilling. And then, and then after that my mom's pressed my pops like, yo, you gotta find a school, I'm bringing him back. Like so then my pops, he um, reached out to Dwayne, okay. who was coaching with Mo Hicks. And he was like, yo, bring him in here. And then that's how that whole thing happened. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't take it that year. He lost to what, Severian in the semifinals? Yeah, something like that. Like semifinals, like yeah, that. man. Yeah. They had LeVance, LeVance Fields from Pittsburgh. Yeah, they had a good squad. Really yeah, good squad. Yeah. A lot of teams had a good squad. Like I'm not, not going to like blame it on a certain person, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Audi decks somebody that game again, so. <laughs> yeah, Audi was a wild boy. That's my man. No, yeah, yeah, that's my man. man. That was from, um, yeah. from yeah. after Rice. My bad. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 that's true. So after Rice High School, you went to um to St. Benedict's Prep. Yeah, in New Jersey. Benedict's, yeah, because I, I needed like at right at Rice, I came into a system that was like. It was what it was, you know what I'm saying? I was just a little add-on, you know what I'm saying? Like, I made things a little bit better being a good player and all that. But you got what, what is worth from Rice going from nah, there definitely, and definitely. then went on to St. Benedict's. Definitely, definitely. And then that, like, Rice really, like, gave me that, like, competitive drop because, like, that, like, it built me because coming from Delaware, I'm like, I'm the man in Delaware. Like, I'm mm -hmm. lit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm about to do the same shit in New York. Come back, like, niggas is at me. So, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, yo, really? Like, all right, you got to turn it up now. You know what I'm saying like you got to turn it up. You got to understand like you know the competitive job, and then from there, that's when I said I need another year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying which that, is when I ended up going to St. Benedict. Yeah, cause that competition was definitely you was going against a whole bunch of yeah. um, D1 players. D1, mm -hmm. all Division One. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was perfect, and that led to uh, playing with Buzz Williams, Buzz Williams and, uh, and Marquette. And yeah. Marquette. Yeah. And uh, yeah, talk about that. Well, actually, Buzz Williams was my last year, my senior year, but like okay. most of my tenure at Marquette was, was under right? Tom Cream. Yeah, but he right. left like after our junior year, and Buzz ended up taking over as a as an assistant moving up to our senior year. But I mean, playing for Buzz was amazing. Like he was one of the the, the best coaches I I think I've ever had in my life, on and off the court. 
Crane was good too. Like he was a good X and O guy, really good at player development. Like, you know, he always finds those like diamond in the rough type players, which is like what Marquette is really known for producing, mm-hmm. you know, Dwayne Wade, Jay Crowder, Jimmy mm-hmm. Butler, Wesley Matthews. Like these are not guys that like coming out had the best reputation, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like he finds them and he puts them in that, that system and not even just the system, like the, the atmosphere too. Like, cause like I said about Rice, like the competitive atmosphere, like mm-hmm. that was that to the next level, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, cause yep. it's a major division one university. So like Big the East, competition, right? yeah, Big yeah, East. Big My East, first right? year there was our first year in the Big East. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. But y'all, was you, was, was, was you a part of when they made the Jordan switch? Nah, that happened oh, right after I left, and I was tight. I was tight. We was <laughs> Nike my first two years. Nike, 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 and Nike Elite. Like we once we started they making the so turn, crazy. Converse they, yo, with yeah, Dwayne Wade because yeah. Dwayne Wade went Converse, so we had to go Converse yeah, yeah. with D Wade. So my last two we split two years yeah, Nike yeah. and two years Converse. <laughs> so one thing I want to highlight first before I say, so you, I know uh, senior year when you started every game, mm-hmm. uh, Wesley uh, Matthews and Jimmy yeah. Butler. NBA All-Star was on that team. Mm-hmm. Now, before I ask a question about them, I want to highlight, you know, that that in itself just shows the level of basketball you was playing at. I don't yeah. know how conscious you are about that, yeah. but just, just shows that's the creme de la creme, mm-hmm. a very small 1% mm-hmm. of basketball minds that get to do that and play that at such a high level. Right. Um, so how was it playing with those guys? Did you know Jimmy Butler would blossom into the NBA All-Star that he is? And I mean, as far as Jimmy goes, Jimmy was really like, at that point, like, and there's no knock on like Jimmy Butler. Like he, like, if you just look at our team at that point, yeah, it's too real sports, Jimmy had just, just right, just keeping it real. Like sure. Jimmy came into like some, something that we already had going. This is like what, when like Coach Buzz took over and Coach Buzz was responsible for bringing Jimmy to Marquette, like him and his other guy, Joe Fultz. They came like, you know, cause Buzz recruited him there and then Buzz ended up taking over. So at that point, like, we was already like kind of lit the first couple of years. Like we was making a tournament, like Dominique James, Wesley Matthews, Jarrell McNeil, like my cl- these all my classmates. Like we all came in together from first to the finish. You know what I'm saying they were obviously statistically be- like better players than I was, but at the same point, like we had built something like at that point to where like we was rolling. You know what I'm saying and Jimmy came in and was a great addition to that. Jimmy was like playing like competitive late game minutes at some point in that year, which was right with like he was a great boost for our team. You know what I'm saying? But like at that point, I didn't really see that side of Jimmy, you know, after I graduated and then they started going to the Elite Eight, Sweet 16, all that after. I'm like, okay, like, yeah, like he's developing into like that guy, you know, and then he ends up getting drafted. And then other guys, you know, the program was just very consistent for a long time at winning, you know, and I think that that just that's just a, like it's, it just speaks to the program that we had, you know, that we developed those kind of guys. But Jimmy, like from now, seeing to what, seeing that now, and then seeing what he's doing in the NBA, to me is like, it's amazing. Cause you know, like I remember Jimmy, like we in conditioning together, like and like having those tough moments and seeing they, like seeing us get through all that kind of stuff, and then to see him go to the levels that he got now is amazing. Which like, for me, is a is you know more power to him yeah. and everything that he he has yeah, going definitely. on. You know. I mean, well, you know, you contribute to it. You know what I'm saying? You contributed to that. Definitely yeah. did yeah. your That's part. also something to be proud of. Yeah. Uh, tag, I miss the Big East, man. Nah, the Big East. Yeah, that's that why I had to ask you, Big East, because I want to know if they chop it all it's up different. before you had left and all that, because I know the Big East not the same no more. It's man. different, It's definitely it's not different. the same, man. Like, you got to think about, like, my first Big East game was UConn, and it had... <laughs> Rudy Gay, oh, Marcus man. Williams, yeah. Rashad Anderson, yeah. the um, the big uh, Boone. My man, Boone. AJ Price Julius on that team. It was ranked Price, number yeah. two in the nation at was that AJ point. AJ on that team. AJ Price yeah, too. Man, AJ, AJ Price. Price. That was after AJ the whole Price, laptop yeah. shit, and then we had our fans was like <laughs> yeah. teasing him with the laptop. Calhoun <laughs> yeah. yeah. was still there coaching. Yeah, all that. You know what I'm saying? That was our first Big East game, our freshman uh, year, and we beat them. Oh, y'all won too. Yeah, we beat them. See, that's a great welcome to the Big East game. That's what's up. See, and then that year, like we was. Like the top four Big East teams, and we was the only new team in the in the conference from because that was our Conference USA coming mm-hmm. over the Big oh, East. That's right. So we was the only team from Conference USA, um, USA to the Big East to have like that successful of a first season, mm-hmm. and we just took it took it from there. So y'all set it off, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we set it off because it was the okay, Final yeah. Four team with D Wade, Travis Dina, Steve Novak, yeah. these guys, and Steve Novak and Travis Dina. They was freshmen. We we was freshmen when they were seniors. Yeah, you know, okay, yeah. they were kind of well. Travis actually graduated, but Steve was our senior in our team. Joe Chapman, 
But these guys, like, a part of that Final Four team, so they had that spirit, but Marquette went through a couple of years where it's, like, transitional, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely, yeah. So, mm -hmm. after that, we put them back on the map, kind of, you know? And they've been, like, consistent ever since then? Yeah, they've been a high major uni division, univer uh -huh. univer division one university since. Yeah, so you yeah. definitely take credit for that, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Now I want to talk about some pro ball. Uh, now, have you been in France the entire time? Nah, I've had, had that, a so lot yeah, of different... I, start, I think to this point, it's like 11 different countries. Oh, but, wow. So, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot. beautiful being able to yeah. see the world like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, name someone, name some of those all. My first gig was in Uruguay, uh, Uruguay or Uruguay, okay. as they say, in um, Southern America. My second gig was Czech Republic, okay. France. Slovakia, uh -huh. um, Lithuania, uh -huh. um, Switzerland, Geneva. I played in Geneva, Switzerland. I played in Japan after that. And uh -huh. I played in uh, Chile. Chile. Yeah, Chile and South uh -huh. America. And then I played in Sweden after that. And then from there, I went to Argentina. And then from Argentina, I went to France. And I've been in France ever since. That's hot though. Yeah. Be able to see all those see, places. See, now, now I can see why. Yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, well, your status been all about the World yeah. Cup now. Yeah, you well in tune. Yeah, I see why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been you up, well in tune now, man. man. <laughs> Word, you can put on all jerseys. Yeah, yeah. 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 You from the official. Yeah. You see all the one. He yeah. on the World Cup. Yeah. He's totally yeah. he's announcing and all that. You yeah. breaking it down. Yeah. 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 Whoever, whoever win, you really can uh, be. Yeah, I've actually been to a few places with teams in the World Cup right now. So like that for me, it's like it's a little thing that I kind of keep for myself, you know. That's fine. But yeah, I played a lot of places. I could, I, I could only imagine and uh, that being frustrating though at times. Yeah, nah, I mean, for me, me professionally, like my experience is really, it's been very, very great for me personally. I'm like, it's, it's, I've been able to make money and do something that I love since the time I like graduated and left school. You know, my, my situation was a little bit different coming out like as far as being on that team and coming out, leaving the school, like into a professional like period, like I really kind of like just did things on my own, you know, from that point. I had an agent and then it was a recommendation, but it wasn't really like the best guy, like not to throw shade on him or anything like that. But for me, he wasn't working for me like, like I thought he would. And then after I graduated school, like I went without an agent for like two and a half, three months, you know. My first gig was really something that like me and my father, like we took over like getting me into the professional thing. We did things to help me get into it. And then I did, and my first gig was, like I said, in South America. Which, but ultimately, I, from there, I knew I wanted to play in Europe because it, like, like, it has a bigger stamp on it. And then, like, as far as stability-wise, like, as far as the way the contracts break down and all that over there is different than some places like South America or other places where the money isn't necessarily like all the way guaranteed to you and sometimes with the money over there it's like a, a fight for some players with certain situations so I wanted to get to Europe which I ended up doing and playing in the Czech Republic and then from there and having like you know establishing, establishing myself within Europe a little bit more and then having you know streams and aspirations to move to like bigger leagues and all that in Europe which I did when I played in France the first time, which is my third third year um, out of out of my school profession, which I played at the Czech Republic. So from then I had the the first experience where I was like, all right, now I see what it is, you know, like it's because that situation ended up getting like cut short because of coaching differences within the team and like the team not being as successful as it was. And then that's when I like I saw the like harsher realities like I right, like you can get cut that type yeah. like stuff but yeah, it wasn't even really like on me like I take some fault in it as far as not being able to figure it out you know but yeah. then like a lot of it was like political you know yeah. and I felt like I was kind of like blackballed from that situation like I right, we losing and like somebody got to go so it got to be him you know and from there that like kind of sets you back a little bit because you got to find another team within that year which i did you know i always like that anytime that situation has happened it's happened another time that time and another time was the only time it's happened but once you get get that situation like get wrapped up in it and you try to bounce back from it it's kind of like a step a misstep in the you know in the season because mm -hmm. over there like they like to see mm -hmm. you produce over a whole season and then you know from there take that into winning yeah. you know and I did that, but it's just when you get to with certain coaches in a certain situation, it doesn't always work out. And not all the teams, like, they really know what's going on, but they just look at it in a kind of way. So somebody got to take a chance on you to prove yourself, you know? Uh -huh. But that's happened a couple times. But other than that, it's been, for me, it's been great. You know, I've been able to play 
professionally for uh, it'll be my tenth year coming up now. Definitely. And then so, you know, I show my family the world from it. So you know, it's been it's been a real good thing for me. I like. And you've had success out there. You won a yeah, championship. Yeah, yeah, I won a championship. Year, you know, I've been like I produce at a high level for a long time. So for me, like it's still something that. I get a, a, a huge rush out of like I can't like I try to take more time than I wanted to take off this mm -hmm. year coming home but like I just kept getting the itch and at like 30 I'll be 32 in August like if I have that itch to like still compete and get better at it like it's like why not continue to rock out yeah, you know? definitely. yeah say I, I don't want to mess with where you at now in France I know it's called to be say it for me I want to <laughs> I got you. I, I got yeah, you. you gotta, yeah, Boulon. Yeah, yeah. That's Boulon. Right. my brother. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Shout out Boulon, France. France. Is online. <laughs> Boulon, France. Yeah, shout out my... So now, since we're talking about Europe, right, I got a question, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about Europe. We're going to get into some other stuff mm -hmm. uh, right now. Off Europe, fashion. I know you into the fashion thing a bit and everything like that. Mm -hmm. All right, right? So, you know, my favorite player is Russell Westbrook, right? So I know he's the fashion <laughs> king. And him and all the swaggy peas and all them, I get them. Yeah. And I know part of it is yeah. I just not in tune. Yeah. But the only thing I wonder is how do they pick out the outfits to know this is fire or this is this is the drip? I mean, that drip shit is a new thing. So I mean, I'm older. <laughs> like you gotta think like a lot of these dudes are younger than me. Like the way I look at fashion, like I just like what I like, you know. And a lot of these dudes like. Like, they pushed the limit a little bit yeah. and got, like, people looking at them kind of funny. But to me, it's like, let them express themselves at the end yeah. of the day. That's like, I, I got people that I know that, like, they they look at me funny sometimes for some of the people. Like, they, they give me, like, shit for some of the, like, things that I wear, which yeah. is cool. Like, you know, if it ain't, you ain't into it, you ain't into it. I don't knock it, you know, if you're not. Like, and I know it's all fun and games. But, yeah. I mean, some of the stuff I see, like, they push the line a little bit. But, I mean, they having fun. And at the end of the day, ain't nobody getting it. hurt. So. I, I chalk it up to my age, my fault. Am I yeah. being stubborn? Because, like, all right, I, I made the change. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was born in 85. I understand. Like, I slimmed down majorly. I'm not talking about my weight. I'm talking about my clothes. Like, yeah. I, I, my tailor tooth and all that. Happened. But, it's however, happened. but I, however, I, I, am I being stubborn, though? I'm not doing the loafers with, with no socks ever. I'm never doing it. Yeah, I'm never ever doing it. And I, see, I and I though. see and I see it's a thing. It's though. a trendy thing. Every yeah. time these, I saw a lot of prom suits, young, young, the young boys out there killing with their proms, <laughs> but they don't got no socks on. I'm just not doing it. I'm never doing it. I'm never. I'm I mean, never. No doubt. I feel you. I don't knock. I don't want to sound like the get I off my old say. man, get off my lawn, but I'm not doing that. Nah, I can't, I can't say, say I've never worn. Not worn a loafer with no socks. I've think, done it. I think, like, but, technically, in a way, loafers, I mean, I wear socks with my loafers. They're not but technically, technically supposed, supposed to be having socks. Like, you're not, like, you could do a thin sock, but they're not yeah, really meant to have socks. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So it's really, like, it's really, like, flavor when you're supposed to do it with no, but some of the things, they don't go off as well. Some people don't look right in it, like. And then people, it's something they do in the wintertime, too. You nah, the like, wintertime <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> I see ankles in the wintertime. You gotta put the ankles away. Yeah, but nah, I'm not doing it. You gotta cover the ankles up. For the winner, at least, <laughs> See, at least like, for the winner. No like, come on. Yeah. All right, now before we before we talk uh, some more sports, we're gonna talk a little football. I still don't know what accent that is, but I mm -hmm. keep using it. And we're gonna talk some uh, basketball. Uh, so you know, I'm 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 looking for a plan B to win the live, man. I'm, uh -huh. I, it's gonna go down any day in this America <laughs> place. So I'm I'm I was thinking about the islands. Mm -hmm. But uh, the hurricanes that just happened kind of scared me a little it's bit. It's tough with that. So now, you know, Europe is a prospect of where I'm, I might move. Mm -hmm. now, now, tell me, how's the living out there? I mean, it depends on where you're at. Like, me playing in so many countries, like, that's kind of shaped my perspective of different parts of Europe. Just because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of different things. Like, you got to think about it. Europe itself is, like a continent but it's full of a bunch of different nations you know mm -hmm. like you can go from here to here and they don't speak the same language as you so like once you're playing in these different places like you get to experience a lot of different vibes you know and some places over there like it's cool but it's not really like it's not really like positive places like i've experienced like like racism and all mm -hmm. that being over there in certain parts of it. A lot of places are more multicultural, more like accepting other people of other races, even though it's like intermingled, like, you know, there are little differences and all that, which is everywhere. Yeah. But a lot of places over there, it's like blatant, like hatred and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's not something that like you would want to be around on a consistent basis if you wasn't taking a job there, you know? Like I know people like that have gotten like 
seriously hurt and killed over there just like being in the wrong situation with some dudes that didn't like him or they was jealous because they was a ball player, you know, and then like it got into some physical stuff and like somebody ended up going to the hospital and then was unconscious and all that kind of stuff. Like, so I see like where the hatred and all that can go, but I mean, for the most part, if you went right, like the right places, then you good. But it's like, it's even the same thing here, you know, it's just out there. So certain things are going to make you as uncomfortable as a black man, like playing in a place that's, you know, not your own technically. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like a lot of it, you got to accept because this is what you're here to do. And you get a lot of love too at the same time, even in those places where it's like not as like racially accepting, you know, like there's fans of the teams, like it for me is the best experience playing over there, you know, because like these people is like invested in their hometown clubs, just like over here. Like we from New York, we Knicks fans, we Knicks fans, you mm -hmm. know, like we invested in those teams, even when they trash, you know, like yeah. they supporting these people is at the games. I've had fans like give me gifts, personal gifts to take home with me, like just feed me food, like yeah, you can eat at my house, like types of so you get a lot of love, so you experience a lot of good and the lifestyle is is just, just different here. Like from place to place it's just different than here. And getting the experience of all all those things for me is one of the best things about playing over there, you know. And it's a cool situation. It's good to do, you know, but you just gotta be aware of like both sides of it, you know, wherever you go, wherever you step off the plane, like just know there's two sides of wherever you land and you just gotta find your way within the middle of it somehow mm -hmm. to understand how to move here until you gotta go back home. Mm -hmm. I might go back to the Caribbean then. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> at least you know that the vibe is more chill, <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta worry about a big storm every summer, you know, yeah, damn, or two or three, you know, but. That's a terrible part. Yeah, that's the worst part, but you know, my family is Caribbean, so I'm, for me, I'm working yeah. on my dual citizenship yeah. now, so for me, that would be the first place I would go. Dang, I gotta go find some family so I can get a dual citizenship. Yeah, yeah, my pops is from there, so I can I get it through. my roots. Yeah. I'm scared to do that that DNA joint. I haven't oh, done it yet. The DNA joint? Nah, uh, Y'all watch Westworld? Yeah. Nah, 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 see, that yeah. Westworld really got me thinking I ain't doing no DNA joint. Yeah, nah. Nah, nah man, nah, they nah. take no nah. joints and they, I don't know what they doing, yeah. man, but I ain't doing it. But I gotta find some yeah. family in the Caribbean yeah. world, so. Before we get into the uh, NBA, I just want to ask you as a fellow Barcelona brother, yeah, right? Man. Yeah, man. You know, there's rumors Neymar want to come back. You accepting him with open arms? You better. You don't like the way he you, went out? You better. I mean, honestly, I would, if if the rumors are true, I would take him back. Yeah. Cleave to like, the broad I would take right? him back. Can't be stubborn. But right? the thing is, know, like, it's, it's always been Messi's team. As long as Messi got a good relationship with him, then he's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Messi like, on the way out, man. No, I mean, he, no, Messi is no, on the way out as far as age, but as far as yeah, ability probably. to make the effect on the game, Messi is still one of the best players ever. Is but he be just, who's better right now than him anymore? Him and Neymar? Yeah, right, right now. Messi, right, right now? Right now? Messi. Today? Right now. I would say Messi. I don't think it's close right like, now. I'm bushy. I'm not, I can't, I'm not older like y'all. I've just been watching the World Cup. He looks better than Messi to me. I mean, right now, but you got to understand, like, in Messi's situation right now, is not, he not playing within... He's not playing in himself right now. They've been finding themselves this whole tournament. Like, up that first he left game. the team. Like he left the team before. He, they had to like basically beg him to come back and play for Argentina, and he did because they need him. But at the end of the day, like, like the way things is going over there, the coaches are like he's a lame. Like he don't know what he's doing. Like he's not even using the team to the best of his potential. And a lot of it has to be centered around the best player, which is Messi. You know, so if he if certain things aren't in place, he's not like the physical specimen of some of these other sure guys, ain't. which is like. The, for me, the biggest knock between him and Ronaldo, because Ronaldo's like a bigger athlete, so a lot of the knocks that he could take, like Messi not taking those, which is a credit to Ronaldo, but at the end of the time, within the right system, you let Messi do what he do, like people gonna have chances and he gonna score a lot of goals. Like he's been doing it for a long time. He won player of the world, world player of the year five times, so it's not like you just like, it's not like he's a, a, a dub, but like he's a real no, I'm player. I'm not saying like, that. They still, at this point, they still in it, right? Yeah, they right, still so in it. Who have a chance? They still in it. But I will they say, like, like, especially about Ronaldo, they put him in great positions to be Ronaldo. That's the thing. This is the thing. Like, everything is they like, sure they put it on the plate Ronaldo. for him. Like, yeah. the look at Ronaldo, look, look at <laughs> Portugal. Like, yeah. not even, let's say, Real Madrid, because Real Madrid is full of stars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, on their own, right? They got a bunch of stars over there. But look at like Portugal. Portugal don't really got a bunch of dudes that's like, like 
that guy, but they all like know how to play off. They always yeah. looking for him. He dominates everything, yeah. and he sets up what they try to do, which yeah. is good for them. They still in the tournament, and he been having a great tournament so far. Yeah. So you can't knock him. But at the end of the day, like his like his table is full. Like his meal is set out like perfectly, perfect portions, all that. Like Messi got to get the food and put it all together, kind of, in order for him to get a win. You know what I'm so it's kind of tough. I feel but it's soccer. It's more players on the field. So I understand you got you got more of a team thing in that. It's not like LeBron yeah, and it's everybody a big making excuses for LeBron. So it's I get that, but I still like Neymar better. I you know, what I mean, Neymar, no, Neymar's no, just like he's. I like Neymar a lot, but he's like you gotta. He gotta do more. You know what it is with yeah. Neymar. Like his resume. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do. You, you gotta know, tell me. Yeah, get some know, more goals, more. Two, like, three years from now. Years, no, yeah, yeah, like yeah, let him get. Yeah, start getting the accolades. I think what it is with Neymar when he was really young. It was all potential. Yeah. He was real flashy. He up to it. And he's like real potential. And he is. But I think he, he should have never left Barcelona so early. He wanted to be the man, but he ain't the man man yet. Like, he ain't a Messi Ronaldo no. yet. No. So he should have stayed there. That's what he found out, and that's why he want to come back. How old is he? 26? Right. Yeah. Now he's no, getting no, up there, though. Yeah, but at the time when it started yeah. in the whole Renault, it was because he was very, I mean, the, you know, Neymar he was young, but now he's getting up there. Yeah, the hype. So now, you know, we got to see. Hype, but should, I'll take him back, of course. I'll take no, him no, back, man. But I ain't like the way he left, man. Me either, but you got to take him back. You got to take him back because he's going to be even better coming back than he was when he yeah. left. Yeah, he's humble. He'll be humble. Because like sometimes just, he would go crazy with the just like mm -hmm. one on everybody stuff. You're like, yo, Neymar, mm -hmm. chill out, yo. Mm -hmm. But now hopefully he'll Pre -Madonna. come back. Like, Pre-Madonna yeah. a little bit. But, but you know, that's the Brazilian It's style. a personality. You got to go with yeah. it. He's still a hell of a, a so football who, player. He is, so. So what's your prediction on taking it? You know I'm the one with Brazil. If you know I mean, I'm taking my name on Brazil the play. I would watch Brazil before I came out here. They played. Yeah, I know. I see, I see they had a game. I, like that. I, like that. Them, yeah. I don't know. The field is open. Like, I don't, yeah, it's open right now. I don't, taking nobody's Brazil. really been impressive to me, really. Taking like, Brazil. I know what Portugal is, and I know, like, they have that talent. But, like, their team, to me, is a, Spain, to me, has been the most impressive because of their style of play, mm -hmm. and they got, like, the stars. And Diego Costa's a beast, like... I'm saying physically, like, he's another one of those big, like, bruiser-type strikers. You can't really knock him off of what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, like, I like what they got. I would say they would be, like, at this point, if I had to just put my name in, like, if somebody put a gun in my head right now, I would say Spain because I like what I've seen okay. the most out of them. Everybody else has been, like, inconsistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had their ups and downs, which is kind of, like, it is what it is at this point because a lot of these dudes is coming off of their season, so this is like extra play for them. Yeah, and it's yeah. the biggest soccer tournament yeah, in the so world. You gotta like, yeah. So you got it's a lot of fatigue. A lot of these dudes is like just trying to fight through it, which is like a testament to those guys. But you know, it's been some sloppy play. You know, Definitely. I think. Who are you taking at this point? Argentina. Argentina? Argentina? I would oh, love to say Argentina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to say Spain. You first said that Spain was my. You know, if I just see and, and the, see and like like I said, I'm not on it like y'all. Like I don't know who the Diego but you been is. On it this year, I've been, been watching been the World yeah, Cup yeah, and like who been impressed with me? Spain is standing out. Yeah. But everybody surprised old Germany. Like from the beginning, I'm like, this is the mighty Germany. Nah, this is they, they, they nah, look like Germany, mad stiffs out there, man. Is a staple. I, I, and I did my history. I've seen they won mad World Cup. They won the last World Cup. I'm watching like this is Germany. They beat Messi last time. They played bad in the qualifiers too. Like they was nah. I didn't like at all how they play. Like not the last game. They like. They, they lost North. They, they like just lost South it's, Korea. I'm it's like bad for Germany right now. This is like right. this to them is an embarrassment. Right? And like, also, it's, an embarrassment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge embarrassment. Right. But, but when they, they come know, back, like, politics plays such a huge role in, in like politics yeah, as far as with the players mm -hmm. and clubs and mm -hmm. the relationships between the players and it, it plays a huge role. One because you know, like if to compare it to like let's say USA. Uh, for basketball, right? Mm -hmm. That's for most people. That's an honor they want to do, right? At least a couple times. Right. A lot of these times for players, it's first a political thing between the club right. and the country. Right. Then it's people with the country and maybe their whoever their president figure is. Mm -hmm. It be all kind of whirlwinds See, yeah. that go on in like the soccer element. Not to cut you off, but you know, a lot of it to me, I think a lot of it is what you deal with with these guys, like. Like football or soccer players, like their mentality is like a little bit different. And yeah. a lot of these guys, like their egos is like they make a lot of money. You take a lot. They make a lot. These yeah, they, they make they a, a lot, lot of money. money. Most popular like sport you in talk the world, about yeah. like the league contracts, some and these they get paid in euros and all that over mm -hmm. there. Like they make a lot of money. So that ego come into it, like and they a lot of these guys is the man like all year round at their team. 
and they not even starting in the starting 11 mm -hmm. on the World Cup team. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's a lot of egos and all that like mm -hmm. within it. And I think that kind of affects some of the play mm -hmm. on the on the actual field or pitches, they call it. But I mean, a lot There's of this, I mean, pitch. even on Germany, uh, I can't <laughs> even think pitch. of his name right now. But one of the, the, the best strikers out there who, who didn't make the team. He didn't get on the team. I'm forgetting wow. his name right now. But, uh... He, oh, yeah. And what is so that name? just I'm shows, like, it's like a whole lot of blank. just... Yeah. He was, yeah. was, yeah. was coaching right and, and then yeah. winning the last cup. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm drawing like, a So it'd right be like a whole lot yeah. of things, so... You know. And then they fight Spain's coach right before it started? Yeah, yes. that's another crazy yes. thing. Yes. Crazy. So it's like yeah, this FIFA shit and then all the scandals, yeah. I can't even Yeah. That's I might have about scandals, it right now. But I like the game. Now yeah, tell me uh, tell cool me what game. you wanna do. I, I for some reason I feel like it's dope that we don't talk basketball. That like we talk soccer because it's yeah, so nice. We ain't really yeah. touch basketball. Yeah, so, I'm mean, experience. And, 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 yeah. So if you want to touch basketball, nah, I can. I do. I can. I do. Because like yeah, as you say, you're a Knicks like, fan. I'm a Knicks okay, fan yeah, too. Yeah. Like, like, how do you feel about um the pit Knox from um, um Kentucky? Like, I just want to say this. Everybody out there, all you Knicks fans out there, all uh, have your panties in the bunch because y'all <laughs> didn't pick Michael Porter Jr. When you get your chance to take over a team and win your own shift, you can pick every 19-year-old that has back and yeah. hip issues yeah. as you want. Yeah. Obviously, the Knicks ain't the only team that passed up on them. What, what yeah, team got to um, on a lot of the 15 to, 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 to Denver? Right. We're not the only ones. If I, I hope it does play out because ain't nobody wishing um no bad no yeah, no bad nah, stuff on the young definitely dude. Definitely not health wise. But come on now, yeah, I, I, I like our pick so far. I don't really know much about him because Kentucky ain't really getting together to towards the end. I don't really pay much attention, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I like the back. I like I, 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 I like the, like the potential, yo. Kentucky. I thought he was the most pro watching now. I, I like the pick too. This year, possibly. I love the pick. This year, possibly. And Kentucky be turning them out. So, you know, they got a lot of good players in the league yeah. right now. So, or guys that have stuck in the yeah. league. So, at the end of the day, it's a good gamble. Like, you just got to see how it pan out with these dudes. Because it's like, it ain't like it's too many short shots nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the, the way the game is, it's not like. Like, you knew who was going to be that guy. Like, yeah. it's, a lot of these people, if they wasn't that guy when it turned to the league, it was like a monumental, like, yo, what happened to him? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, if you were supposed to be that guy back then, you you turned out to be that guy in that league at some in some way, shape, or form. It was a lot of dominant and the roughs that ended up coming out of nowhere. But, like, if you were supposed to produce in the league, you ended up doing it at that mm -hmm. point. That like, true. now it's like, now you know, you the game is watered yeah. down now, so you really can't say for sure, you yeah. know. Yeah. It's all potential. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's all, all potential, potential right now. They're all going so all young, and so you just don't. Yeah. It's so going true. young, and years. they're not really getting the same. Like, it wasn't, the like, the grassroots level of basketball is not the same as it was when we was coming up younger. Yeah. Like, like, the things they, like, are into. Like, it's all about, like, the money now, the sneakers, nah. like, the... Views, mm -hmm. like yeah, that's another part like, of it. Now. Bro, all this is is about views and getting like your name yeah. out there. Like it's not even really about being like the best player yeah. you can, that's you know. Fact. So I'm it's like sure. a lot of these dudes end up getting to these higher levels, and then at the end of the day, until the league just gets watered down completely, like you end up like fizzling out. Mm -hmm. Like yo, he's not really that guy. Like you know, mm -hmm. you out of here. Like go play in Europe somewhere, you know. But. No, not like if you in there, you deserve it. You stick like I, I salute you, but you can't like you never know. Uh, I like him like athletic wise to bring back the Nas kid. I like him like his his ability like he should he should be able to play in the NBA. But we gotta wait to we'll see how he develops. Gotta wait to see. The Knicks got a lot of questions right now. You know? Now I don't want to be selfish and talk about the Knicks, but let's just pick pick up like a more um, broader topic like. I think DeAndre Ayton is a nice little piece to some, a nice little start to something that happened in Phoenix. Man, now they got Josh Jackson, and they got the young, the young Mamba out there, my young boy. I, just, I forgot his name. <laughs> Booker, there you go. Booker, Booker, Booker. I gotta stop doing Booker, this. Booker, Booker, Booker the cooker. Yeah, so I, that's a nice little three. That's a nice yeah, little start to little three they got, man. It is. I don't. I, I, I think Bagley was the best player in the draft. So, no, yeah, right. I, I think Bagley's the best player in the track. And, and I think uh, I think people are in love with he's physically NBA, but I don't I don't know. I'm still not sold. Andre? I can't yeah, I can't like you know, I think he's, I think, a I, he's I, immediate impact if I you think ask. He's right in there with a double double man. Because he knows like he like to me what I think about him, like and I caught on to him late, like I don't really follow college basketball as much as I really used to because yeah. I was in it. Like what then you know, like, I catch, like, the players that... Yeah, I, I, I watch him play at least a couple times, you know, but, yeah. like, seeing him, like, he... Like, I like him. Like, he got the right mentality, too. Like, he not, like... 
like when he got drafted, they was asking him. They interviewed him. They was asking him about like how he sees his game fitting in, and like he kind of like deaded any of the noise, like that he was like could be like labeled as like one of those guys who just like he big, but he liked to play on the perimeter. He like you know I want to establish myself on the inside, you know like. I know, like, I have the ability to play outside and do a lot of uh, other things that some of these other guys might be able to. He's like, I want to, like, establish myself inside and, you know, get better and better and better at dominating the game, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like you got that mentality with that athletic ability already. Like, you focus. Like, a lot of these dudes, they, they don't play D in the league. So if you, mm -hmm. like, if you're a big man and you, like, know how to establish yourself on the inside now, you'll eat all day if you got any kind of skill. And speaking of not you playing know? D, you heard the shot and D took at him? Yeah, he messed yeah. up. He should have yeah, played that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, B, you know, yeah. I know he's braggadocious, so, yeah. you know. He's, he's like, talking he, shit while he's losing no the game. He's about to bum. He's still no talking doubt. shit. So, it's it's like, all it's it was unnecessary. He's a yeah, stunt, too, but yeah. uh, he that's he like, that. he like the pro. He likes the part of the It's all about the views and the likes and all this shit. You know, he wants the basketball. But they got to play each other next year. Yeah, that's fact. You know ESPN is going to put that little quote before the game. They're going to talk about it all the sports. So, we see how that goes there. And it's good for Aiden because motivation you know exactly. now you got to exactly. you was the first number exactly. one pick so now you got to exactly. motivate so you out. so what you gonna and do and I think Embiid should have never did that exactly. I mean I, I don't you know take it serious but it was unnecessary and now you might have just put a target you know I just know it's going to show how much defense he don't play that's what I mean if you say he can't they don't play you gotta bust his ass mm, yeah. definitely but you got definitely. to like, definitely watch you, that if you don't now. come out that game with at least 30 then bro like what you talking shit for like you know what I'm saying cause it ain't like you did better than you would probably do on anybody else you know what I'm yeah, saying like, saying you don't play deep like you gotta a lot of pressure on B next year too yeah, yeah. I mean, this year this year they, 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 they the broken the ball's face. higher now yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. A back to back year that's that's yeah. when you know you yeah. solid so I mean he like people talking about him like he's gonna be an MVP candidate so he has gotta take it to that next level he got the broken face in the playoff kinda you know threw him off a little bit I think they collapsed personally but at the end of the day. Yeah, I think it's just a part of the growing, though. It's part of the growing, but I think they got exposed. Honestly. I don't think they got collapsed. I think, I think they got outcoached. I think they got outcoached. Out out getting outcoached out out yeah. led to the yeah. collapse, yeah. though. Because it's like, like for me, they lost that series because Ben Simmons can't shoot. Like, yeah. And this is just fact. Yeah, yeah, like, this yeah. is just fact. Like, and he's the motor of their team. And B gets a lot of things, but... Simmons got the ball in his hand all the time. It's like, the so when you pack in the paint like that, you're not letting him get to all his little angles and use his athleticism and his body to score. Like, he not really, he, he just, it was wearing down on him. And he doesn't do anything else. Yeah, like, and then on top of him, he don't even try to shoot. Yeah, exactly. Like, on top of him, he wasn't even tipping. He even like, like the try, tip. bro. Like, all right, try. you can make like, easy, got to. Like, you might get hot. You might hit two or three. But that's why I think it's a part of the learning process of being yeah, a young you got, player. Yeah, that's you have to have to go through. That's like earlier when we were talking off camera about Jordan playing the Pistons. And it made nice. Jordan go to the weight room and get stronger. And so it just has to happen with the, it has to happen with Ben Simmons. Like anyone. Any rookie, any sophomore, you gotta no, go to it. Twenty, no uh, you gotta, you gotta come back. You can bounce back yeah, from man, it. Yeah. You gotta shoot that rock, though. Yeah, no, he definitely got to learn. You guys at least shoot it up, get it up there, man. Don't just stand there and not try. They need to be getting five hundred makes a day. Yeah, yeah. They gonna do that. Any, anything else you want to talk about basketball wise? Anything before we get out of here, man? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a solid. I'm gonna leave LeBron alone this segment, man. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone this segment, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta, yeah, we gotta see where he's going, man. Yeah, we gotta see where he's going. Yeah, definitely, it's man. It's a big talk. It's a big talk, man. Yeah. Where, where do you think he'll end up? We might as well just touch that real quick. Where do you think he's gonna end up at? I saw what you said about where he's gonna end up with the OKC thing. To me, that would be his, <laughs> probably his, that would be his best. That's crazy. I don't LeBron. Up, no, no, I, I don't. I don't. No, I don't by opting in, I mean we knew he was gonna opt in. Yeah, we knew yeah, like you if you're not turn it down twenty eight. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, you can't do it now. It's over. It's definitely so PG might as well stay. And let's just we gonna do this again. The OKC gonna win next year. You heard it right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But as far as LeBron, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, dude got a lot of. He got a real. He gotta have a real sit down with himself before this one, man. Because <laughs> because it's a lot of pressure, like, but does the. the in this day and age, like depression for him probably feel like, like it probably feel like he in a box right now, like he can't even move. Like yeah. depression for him is crazy. A lot of it's self inflicted, which like I'm gonna call him out when it is on him. But like, he gotta think about this one because the the landscape ain't really like wide open right now. Like, 
Golden State still looked like they ain't, yeah. wasn't dominant as they were, but they still won. Yeah. So you Four. still got to beat the dog. So it's like, who going to do that again next year? I think the Rockets maybe, but I don't know how the Rockets going to work with him. Like, That's his best move. You best know, move. But. I don't think I don't I can't say for sure. I just think star power wise it'll probably make sense, but from what the Rockets do and what LeBron does, like LeBron is a team changer. Like he couldn't win in Miami until Dwayne Wade told him, like, yo, this is your team. Like he's a team changer. Like you go as he goes, like his ability, you know, it just doesn't really go in the winning moments as much, you know, but the way like he's a when you fit him into a team like you have to account for that so everybody else is gonna have to change their game and do you want to tell james harden like the, like you want to talk about fashion you see his suit and like oh like God. you know like he was partying with nipsey <laughs> on instagram with that like so he ain't win this year but he took that he, he, he wanted like he that he would thought he, he wanted, wanted that so you want to yeah. tell this guy like he got to change his game nah, it's not and i'm not even gonna say he gonna shut down lebron because at the end of the day like these, all, these guys all want to win, so they're going to try to make it work, you know, yeah, if you're going to put these stars together. They're going to try to find a way to make it work, but it's like, what you going to tell James Harden to do? Like, go stand in the corner while LeBron, like, you know? Yeah, that's but then it's like, what you going to tell LeBron to do? Go stand in the corner and wait See for James? See what happened to James Harden when Chris Paul tried to tell him to do. No doubt. On the bench with the sad puppy like, face, I'm not bro. hearing that, bro. Exactly. Like, I've been doing this, you know? Like, they told me, like, I left OKC to be the man, like, you know, and I've been carrying these teams like and him. Like he got winning to do too. Like he hasn't always showed up in the biggest moments, but like he just won his MVP. Like he ain't trying to change the squad. I think he came out and said it. Like we don't need to change them. Yeah, they was right there. They feel like if Chris Paul stayed healthy, Chris Paul won him though. So. Chris Paul won LeBron. That's bad. his friend. So. It's his friend, but at the end of the day, like James how you really like see like it working? Yeah, like nah. He gotta have a sit down with Chris. Like yo, like I know you want him, but. Like, let's just do this again. He ain't even sitting with Chris. He talking to management, yeah. if anything. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Paul, cause Chris Paul ain't looking for Yeah, because they gonna ride, they gonna ride. But, yeah, I mean, just as far as keep, maybe to keep the relationship better, he got to sit down about that one. Yeah, he slapped. He, he told that man the three words you don't tell somebody. SMD in the clip. So, I don't think he really cares what Chris Paul talking about. No doubt. I mean, you know, that's in the heat no of the battle doubt. and everything like that. No but, but when you say that, that comes with some spice, that's yeah, spice yeah, bro. Yeah, that's spice. Like, we so, might have to talk in a lot. I mean, you know, Chris Paul like, has a history of having trouble with teammates, but that's a whole other thing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other thing. Hey, man. Appreciate you definitely, coming through. Definitely. Appreciate you coming through. It's the White Bird Man. Yes. Um, you you know where you going next year? Not yet. I'm All right. still waiting it out. Um, well, we're gonna we're gonna keep see, everybody posted. Yeah, see, just gotta see what's up with the representation first, and then mm-hmm. move from there. Just getting yeah. back to working out now, spending uh-huh. time with the family, uh-huh. you know, baby girl, and all that. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's up, Big too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Big, but yeah, appreciate y'all for having me, man. Nah, She's man dope. It's all love, yeah, man. My Barcelona brother. brother again. Barcelona brother. Yes, sir, I'm man. I'm hoping he pull it out. But yeah, man, man he has to, man. To add to the legend, <laughs> man. Add to the if legend. If he do, I don't want to hear nothing. From he got yeah, it's over. Best ever. It's over. If he pull this one out, that's why you gotta do it. So best ever. Hey, like Jimmy V say, don't give up. Don't ever give up. We out of here. This is 21. Deion Sanders, my yeah. favorite player of all time. And the strip club. club. We got the strip club now. We, 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 they be leaving now, baby. 21, we in there, baby. Yo, appreciate yeah. you, man. Love, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. Barcelona.